Welcome to CCBC. We are a Christ-loving and Bible-believing community of people purposely placed by the Almighty in the heart of the nation with the nations at heart. We want to help you become the person God made you to be. So no matter where you are in your journey, you are invited to discover your purpose and live it out at CCBC. Tuning in to our worship services through Facebook or YouTube, that's great! What's even greater is that we have created a platform for you so that you can maximize your digital connection and experience of CCBC's online worship services at home. This is live.ccbc.ph You only need to go to a web browser through your phone or desktop and type in live.ccbc.ph Within this page, you won't just be able to engage with a life-changing community through chat, rather you can also read your Bible, review sermon notes, share quotes from the speaker, ask for a private prayer chat, and financially support the church, all in one platform. The next time you tune in, go to our website at live.ccbc.ph and bring the CCBC experience to your home. If you have children ages 3 to 12 years old, you may connect with our Kids Ministry Sunday School classes after this online service. For those needing a community to grow with, just visit these Facebook pages to stay updated with their latest programs and events. Lord is an act of worship. It is a way of thanking God for all that He has provided in our lives. It is also supporting the work that God is doing in the community and around the world. Giving online is the easiest and best way to give. You can give anytime, anywhere, online through BDO, BPI, Metrobank, or visit ccbc.ph slash giving for more details. You can also give in person at our designated offering boxes located at the main entrance of CCBC at 111 West Avenue, SMC. We are also one with God and our missionaries in serving the nations. To give by faith through the mission's faith promise, please inform us by sending an email to giving at ccbc.ph. Know that God is honored when we sow into His kingdom.
strengthens our church at home, we encourage you to stay connected with us throughout the week through these different venues. Welcome to CCBC. We are a Christ-loving and Bible-believing community of people purposely placed by the Almighty in the heart of the nation with the nations at heart. We want to help you become the person God made you to be. So no matter where you are in your journey, you are invited to discover your purpose and live it out at CCBC. Tuning in to our worship services through Facebook or YouTube, that's great! What's even greater is that we have created a platform for you so that you can maximize your digital connection and experience of CCBC's online worship services at home. This is live.ccbc.ph You only need to go to a web browser through your phone or desktop and type in live.ccbc.ph Within this page, you won't just be able to engage with a life-changing community through chat, rather you can also read your Bible, review sermon notes, share quotes from the speaker, ask for a private prayer chat, and financially support the church, all in one platform. The next time you tune in, go to our website at live.ccbc.ph and bring the CCBC experience to your home. is crime. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends. Happy anniversary!
Happy Birthday, CCBC! I'm your pastor, George De Ramos. And I'm Justin. To all our CCBCers, our regular attenders, and those who join us for the first time today, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as we are aware that you might be doing this online worship in a different time zone. It has been encouraging to see this church grow, especially in our experience of God over the years. Through all the ups and downs, we can certainly say that God has been faithful. So may we invite you to pause for a moment and think about how God has blessed and worked for you or for your family in this past year. Let us recall how the Lord made it possible for us to survive another year yet again as a church and say a prayer of thanks. Let us come to the Lord in silent prayer. Father, we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. We give thanks to you for blessing us with another year to experience your living power, to be filled with your gracious love and declare the gospel to many more. We will give thanks to you forever, Lord, from generation to generation. We will recount your praise. Open our eyes and our hearts today to the Holy Spirit so may, we may see and know your will. Will you take off all that is occupying our hearts, including our sins, O Lord, so we may truly feel your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus. 
Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Romans 8, 38 and 39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Your name, 
Let us join our hearts for family prayer. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. We come to you, Lord, with grateful hearts. 
for the assurance of forgiveness, for the reality, Lord, that we are reconciled with you. And we could stand with confidence and say it with confidence because of the promise that Jesus has given us. And that is validated, Lord, by his work on the cross, his death, and his resurrection. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for granting us this assurance and causing us, Lord, to be adopted into God's forever family. Thank you for your steadfast love and your mercy. Though we do not deserve it, you gave it freely to us out of your love. And Father, we pray that such love, Lord, would be shared among us in the church, at CCBC, in each of the families, Lord, that are represented, not only, Lord, as us as a congregation, but in those small congregations, Lord, that are gathered in the homes and in our life groups and in our life communities. Let it be a place, Lord, where that love will cause the light of the gospel to shine through this dark world and make an impact in the community where we live. And Father, we pray for our nation that as we pass through these trying times, I pray that you will bring about unity in our leadership. Yes, there may be difference of opinions, difference of ideology, difference in outlook of how this country should be led. But I pray, Father, that you are going to cause a break out, Lord, those bickerings, but cause our leaders, Lord, to truly live and dwell and lead in unity. And I pray, Father, that you will use your children to be a channel of that love and unity, Lord, to our communities, to our homes, into our spheres of influence where you have placed us. As you have taught us, Lord, ministry happens wherever we are, wherever CCBCers are. Cause us love, our lips, Lord, to declare peace, be able to um, humble ourselves and be able to say, I'm sorry, Lord, to each other. And I pray that you will cause our words and our presence to be a channel of your grace and of your presence and of your love as well. And Father, we long, Lord, not only for the time where we will gather together again as a congregation at 111 West Avenue, but even beyond the time, Lord, we long for that day when Christ comes and that we will be gathering in that big fellowship in heaven, those whom you have adopted into your family. We will be reunited, Lord, with those who have gone ahead before us. And we will have this blessed time of worshiping you, honoring the Lamb of God who was slain, celebrating your goodness, your love, and your salvation. Bless us, O God, as we continue to celebrate this love that stirs our faith and puts our hope in what will be ahead of us because of what you have done, O Christ Jesus. And this we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Love is words in action. Kaya nga, do everything right with Jesus in mind to anyone, anytime. No matter how loving I may look on the outside, serving others, helping out, and giving to those in need, it won't matter kung ito ay not done out of love. Narealize ko na hindi basta-basta mauha yung perfect love na kailangan ko. Matatagpuan lang kasi ito from God and sa community niya. At masasaktan ako kapag hinanap-hanap ko to sa lahat ng kakilala ko. Love is kind and it reflects on how we treat other people around us. Hindi ganun kadalit magmahal or to show love. But the Lord teaches us how to be faithful, how to keep the unconditional love kasi yun yung ibinibigay ni Lord sa atin. Isa sa mga bagay na lagi kong pinagpe-pray kay Lord ay tulungan niya ako to live a life that is pleasing to Him. One of the ways that I can do that is to love like Him, to be patient and kind. Ang standard ng pag-ibig ay hindi ang ating kapwa, 
at maging ang ating mga sarili, kundi ang pag-ibig na kagaya na ipinakita sa atin ng Diyos. At magagawa lamang po natin na maipadama at may paranas ang tunay na pagmamahal sa ating kapwa kung tayo po ay mananatiling tapat sa ating Panginoong Diyos at sa Kanyang Santa. Action should reflect Christ's character in me every moment. From me likeness to Christ's likeness. So ang prayer ko sa bawat araw. To be more aware of Him and His gospel that it may so change me inwardly and it would reflect outwardly for His glory. Ako na lang yung maging example ng pagmamahal ni God sa iba. Which is mahirap and only possible if I take more time to look at the life of Christ and mag-rely sa grace ni God. God challenged me to slow down, look around with compassion, and pray more for those who need peace. By God's grace, I am learning to be more generous with my time, speak more words of kindness instead of criticism, and show more goodness to create a supportive environment. So, yun, d- during this time, so tuloy-tuloy lang dapat tayo sa love, sa ito ng Lord sa atin. Minsan, mas madali na lang mag-take ng offense or mag-complain, but God is teaching me to love like Him, to be patient and kind, to be understanding, and to be gracious toward my brothers and sisters. Challenge to share Jesus to others, walk my talk, my faith, share Christ to others, and challenge to get to know Him every day. Just make His name known. So I praise and thank the Lord for His unconditional love, His loving mercy, and His goodness, faithfulness, and greatness for each one of us. Good morning, CCBC family. It's the last Sunday of this month of July, which is our 62nd anniversary. Napakaganda at nakatutuwa kung papanong gumagawa ang Panginoon sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin sa buwang ito ng ating anniversaryo. At bago po ako magpatuloy pa sa mensahe natin ngayong umaga, nais kong pasalamatan ang Gungon family as they led us in our Praise and worship. At ngayon po ating tatalakayin ang huling bahagi ng 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Pero bago natin tunghayan yan at tayo ay mag-aral ng sama-sama, nais ko munang paalalahan ng kayo bagamat narinig nyo na ito at laging na-i-announce sa ilang linggo na kalipas yung ating pong congregational meeting today at 2 o'clock. If you haven't registered, mamaya pag natapos ang ating service, mag-register po kayo. At ganun din, nais nice kong hamunin at anyayahan yung mga kalalakihan na nandiyan Kung katabi niyo po yung tatay mo o yung kuya mo o yung lalaki na nandiyan sa inyong tahanan ngayon, ikaw kapatid, ay meron po tayong sama-sama via Zoom this coming Friday sa July 30 at 7 o'clock at makakasama po namin kayo at makakasama po natin dyan si Dr. Lito Veloria ng GCF South Metro at pag-uusapan natin about empowered men at home. Okay ba? See you this coming Friday. At din pong balikan ang ilang paksa na nakalipas sa buwang ito ng July. The first Sunday, if you remember, I shared to you about what matters most from verses 1 to 3. Without love, no matter what we say, do, or give, we produce nothing. We are nothing 
and we gain nothing. Simply means, love is what matters really. And then, the following Sunday, Pastor George shared to us about love is. Ito yung verses 4 and 5. Pastor George defined about love at nandun yung chart na we can evaluate yung ating mga sarili patungkol sa iba't ibang definisyon ng pag-ibig. At dito, ipinakita ni Pablo yung labing pitong qualities that are expressions of love to one another sa bawat isa sa atin. At palagay ko, inyo namang nakita at kanina meron mga patotoo na ginawa at narinig natin tungkol doon sa kanilang evaluation, sa kanilang mga pag-ibig sa isa't isa. Ang mga pag-ibig na ito ay reflections of Christ-like character. The way we Christians should deal with other people. And we thank God for that. And then, nung sumunod na last Sunday, Pastor George continued the message about the habits of the heart. Ito yung verses 6 and 7. Yung patuloy na listahan ng pagde-define ng love. This list is not just a one-time act, I believe. They became a lifestyle dapat sa ating mga buhay. It should be practiced not only in good times but also in bad times. It always preserves. No, Nag-persevere ang pag-ibig na ito sa atin. So, this morning, we will be ending that beautiful chapter about love in chapter 13. At tignan na natin, follow me, as we will be reading verse by verse. We'll be starting from verse 8 to 10, and then 11 and 12, and then the last verse would be verse 13, the well-known, that. but all of this, love is the greatest. Yun ang pinakadakila sa lahat. Tayo po'y manalangin. Panginoon, nais po namin ipagpasalamat ang pagkakataon na aming mapag-aralan ang huling bahagi ng love chapter ng 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And as we look into your word, allow your spirit that is in us to minister in a very special way that our, our all will be focused only unto you. And may you see our hearts and examine our hearts with regards to the way that we express love towards you as our God, our Lord and our Master, and toward its other Father. Thank you for what you will be doing and how you will be working in our midst today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Tatlong bahagi po ang aking tatalakayin sa umagang ito mula po sa chapter 13 verses 8 to 13 ng 1 Corinthians. First, indeed, let love, let this emerge. Talagang mag-develop po ito sa atin. Talagang makita sa atin yung ganong pag-ibig na nananalaytay. Talagang nakikita at nababalo tayo ng pag-ibig na ito. Ang unang bahagi po, mula verse 8 to 10, I would be calling it the abiding nature of love. The abiding nature of love. Kung papanong mananatili ang kaanyuhan ng pag-ibig sa atin. Makikita nyo po ito. Verse 8, let's start reading. It says, Love never fails, never ends. In other translation, Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, they will pass away. These are the three most coveted spiritual gifts would eventually cease to exist. Itong tatlong itong minention po. Because Paul here is making the principal point that love is superior. Ulitin ko po, that love is superior because it has no temporal limit. It has no temporal limit. Yung pong salita na ginamit for never ends, 
for fail and will pass away. Ito ho yung salita sa Grego na katargeo, meaning to render useless or make inoperative. So yung kung sinasabi natin na knowledge, prophecies, and tongues will all cease, will all pass away. Kung pwede sabihin, will all die, mawawala ho ng saysay. No? Dahil yung prophecies are said to fail not in the sense that they prove untrue, na hindi ho totoo. Pero yung kaisipan na simply they are no longer necessary in the time. The same is true with the partial knowledge. Yung believers possesses, yung pinopossess natin na karunungan sa pangkasalukuyan, mawawalan din po yan ng saysay. And then, yun hong kaalaman niya ay magiging baliwala. At ganun din yung thanks. It will also cease. Mawawala din po. Thanks shall make themselves to cease or thanks shall automatically cease of themselves. So again, ano po yung tatlong mawawala? Prophecies, knowledge, and tongues. They will all pass away. They will all cease. Ito ho ngayon makikita natin sa verse 9 nang sinabi niya, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Bahabahagi lamang po. Dito naman sa talatang 9 o sa, talat, sa verse 9, Paul deal with these two that he had said would also cease. Why? He expresses that both are important but has limitation. When there is knowledge, when there is prophecies, this will only be in part, bahagi lang po. Yung, yung pinaka-intention ng bagay na ito ay nagbibigay paalala doon sa mga taga-Korinto na yung kaloob na meron sila ng karunungan at ng pagpapahayag o ng pagbabahagi na napakaganda na nagtuturo tungkol sa mga kaalaman at katuruan ng Panginoon ay mawawala. There were there are limitations upon these gifts that they have received. Kaya nga mababalikan po natin chapter 12, di ba? It talks about spiritual gifts, tapos yung sa 14 talks about tongues. Pinag-uusapan talaga because these two, especially these two and knowledge and tongues and and prophecies, talagang pagka meron ka nitong kaloob nung araw, talagang parang sikat na sikat ka. Pero sinasabi ni Pablo, all of this, all of this will just cease. All of this will just be, will just pass away. There is an eternity to know and to experience what we at present will see in the future. So, yung mga bagay na yan, mga kapatid, ay mawawala. Sabihin natin kung po pwede magugunaw. Then, let's look at verse 10. Just to put the nail in everything na sinag-uusapan natin. Na magpapakita that this is the abiding nature of love. Yung talagang pananatili ng pag, yung kaanyuhan ng pag-ibig ay nando doon. Verse 10. But when the perfect comes. Tignan nyo po sa Bible nyo. Tignan nyo mga kapatid. O nandiyan dyan yan. Mababasa natin, di ba? When the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Alam nyo, medyo mabigat po yung salitang perfect comes dito eh. Ito ang pinagtatalunan ng marami at meron akong ilang mga binasa tinignan kung ano ba ang interpretation ng when the perfect comes. Doon sa study Bible, sabing ganyan, yun daw interpre- sa dami ng interpretation nito, yun ho kasi yung salitang ginamit na perfect dito, yung teleios, fully developed, complete, perfect, without shortcoming. 
So these are some interpretations, but I will tell you my personal from readings and everything kung ano ho yung kahulugan nito. Sabi ng iba, as they, uh, sabi ng iba, ang view nila is this. The completion of the canon of scripture. The maturity of the church at the close of the apostolic age. The death of the believers and their immediate present presence with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.8, absence in the body, presence with the Lord. And then, pangapat, the rapture of the church daw. Yun yung perfect na sinasabi na perfect when the perfect comes. Tapos, ang isa pa po, yung pagbabalik ni Kristo, the return of Christ. And then, another thing is the eternal state. Yung eternal state natin. Now, so pastor, siguro tanong nyo ngayon. So alin ho doon? Yung when the perfect comes. Ito po yan. When eternity has arrived, that is when the perfect comes. I don't believe that it is the completion of the canon of scripture. Dahil ang canon po, nabuo na yung banal na kasulatan eh. Yung 66 books, nabuo na. Tapos na. But there is still prophecy, there is still knowledge, there is still tongues. And love is still there. You know naman paturity ng iglesia at yung close apostolic age, natapos na din po yung pero nagpapatuloy pa rin po ito. And then, yung death of the believer, namatay na believer, nandun na, sabihin na natin, nandun na sa presence ng Panginoon, pero nagpapatuloy pa rin yung knowledge, prophecy, and tongues, and yung love. And then, the rapture of the church, mangyayari pa lang po ito. And then, yung the return of Christ, mangyayari pa rin. Pero kahit mangyari yan, pag nandun na po sa paghahari na tinatawag natin na when Christ returns, the millennium reign, there will still be the knowledge and prophecy, pero ang love nandun doon pa rin. Kailan mangyayari po? Pag lahat ay nasettle na, new heaven, new earth, then that is the what we call the eternal state where love will prevail. Ayan ho yung tinatawag na the perfect comes. Yun yung pinaka-perfect. Perfect here really refers to the eternal heavenly state of which Apostle Paul refers to in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. When Apostle Paul spoke of delivering up the kingdom of God to the Father after he has put down every enemy. Yun ho sa 15, verse 24. So, yung pinaka-conclusion nito, no? Diyan, na, na ito pong verse 10. Kung ating iuugnay, sundan nyo lang, kung iuugnay po natin yung declaration dun sa verse 8 naman kanina, is that in the heavenly kingdom, there is no longer any need for prophecy, for knowledge, and for tongues. Wala na ho yan. Yung mga special gifts of God, wala na, hindi na kailangan. Lahat yan ay magsisis. But it is only the abiding nature of love that will be there. Kaya, yun ho yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Na mananatili ang pag-ibig hanggang sa kaduluduluhan. At yung iba ay mawawala na. Moving on, tayo, verses 11 and 12. Ito naman po yung basahin ko na muna, ang 11 and 12. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became man, a man, I gave up childish ways. Then verse 12. From now we see in a mirror dimly. Others translated it darkly. But then face to face. I now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Ang portion na ito, ito po yung natawagin kong the enlightening nature of love. Yun po, yung tayo ay pinalalawak, tinuturuan, na e-enlighten tayo. Nagkakaroon ng kaalaman dun sa kaanyuhan ng pag-ibig na meron po tayo. 
In verse 11, going back, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became man, I gave up childish ways. Apostle Paul view the exercise of these spiritual gifts as primarily a developmental stage of the church dito. Kaya makita ho natin, nandun yung sa early beginning ng apostolic church, sa Acts chapter 1, 2, and then so on and so forth, nandun yung speaking in thanks. Di ba? Nandun doon yan. And nandun din yung mga pag a prophesy or yung prophecy na they are teaching the word of God coupled with the knowledge of what they have learned and they with they are with the Lord Jesus Christ lalo na si Pedro yung kanilang mga pagpapahayag so nandoon po yung mga gifts na yan no the idea of manhood now and maturity enabled apostle Paul to lay aside those things, yung mga bagay na yon, that we characterize of childhood. Magpapalit po, mawawala. Again, the same thing with verses 8, 8, to, 8 to 10 na binigyan ni Paul ng illustration na yung mga bagay na yon ay parang yun yung mga ikaw ay bata pa at ma lalagpasan mo na yon at mawawala na yon. Ikaw ay dal Kumbaga, you are mature now, but love will just prevail. Ito yung may enlighten na ho tayo. Tingnan nyo po. Minsan, meron tayong mga pangyayari, di ba? Parang nagbabalik ka sa pagkabata, sinasabing ganyan. Dahil yung waist natin ay parang bata. Minsan, may kumain lang ng lollipop na rin. Parang kang bata, bakit? Ba't ka kumakain ng lollipop? Parang pag kumain ng lollipop, hindi na pwede yung mga may edad. Ganon. No? Parang pambata lang o tapos merong mga ways or gestures that are really from from childhood that we are telling people you are like a child. But here in verse 11 in last part, when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. The implication is this. Excitement of the beginning walk with Christ, the believers in Corinth. They have revealed in their spiritual gifts. But now, they, be, they must continue on to maturity towards becoming man. Doing away with those childish things and becoming a Christian man. So, meron hong pag-angat na dapat na nangyayari sa atin. And then he continue on with verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Almost the same. No? Almost similar na, na pinapakita po ni Pablo dito sa atin. No, hinalintulad niya naman ngayon sa isang salamin. I see and I read a commentary na sinasabi niyang ganon, yun daw hong mga salamin nung araw, nung mga first century, no? na nakikita nila yung low quality ng mga mirrors compared to our mirror today. Medyo talagang malayong malayo. At present, we see that it, those mirrors, ang sabi nga ni Pablo dito, for now we see in a mirror dimly. That is really yung kanilang pananaw, yung kanilang pagtingin. Pero si Pablo, ang kanyang binabahagi naman, now I know in part and now I shall know fully. Alam niyo po, yung ginamit dito na salita doon sa mirror, no? ay yung salitang enigma. Enigma. Meaning, darkly, dimly, madilim. It might be better translated with a partial accuracy. 
Yun ho ang isang bagay dito. In other words, the mirrors into which the people look into are imperfect image. Imperfect image. Any mirror is not the same as looking into the actual face of a person looking in the mirror. Pagtitignan niyo po, ibang iba yan. Mas iba talaga yung actual kesa dun sa nakikita lang natin sa isang salamin na meron po tayo. There will never be a time when any created being will know all that God knows. But certainly the knowledge of men will be fully and complete when that which is perfect will come. Pag dumating na po yung pinakaganap, yung sinasabi natin kanina, the perfect comes, that we will be able to know Him fully. Kaya ang sinasabi ni Pablo dito, so we see in a mirror dimly, medyo madilim. Madilim ang ating nakikita. At ang sinasabi niya ngayon ay iiwanan natin yan at tayo ay dapat umangat at makita natin ang mukaan at makita natin ang malinaw at ang pag-ibig ang magpapakita sa atin ng mga bagay na iyan. And moving towards the last verse, verse 13, it says, So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of this is love. This is now the prevailing nature of love. Love would prevail above all sa atin. Christian love is not described by feelings, but it is defined in loving acts. Yung pinakamalaking larawan po ng passage na ito, ng 8 to 13, is that really love endures. Really love lasts. Really love is permanent. Yan ang pinakabuong larawan. Eh, no? Love leaves a permanent mark on our lives and towards the lives of one another. People may not remember the great Bible lesson you thought as a teacher. The beautiful song someone would sing or programs that we have planned in the church. Marahil marami po tayong magagaling magturo and we thank God for that. Marami po tayong mga ginawang mga bagay-bagay. But I'm not saying that all these are without any importance. Because they are really important. Lahat ng ginagawa po natin. But people will always remember an act of love you've shared. Yun hong pagkilos at paggawa ng may pag-ibig na ating ipinakita. Just for example, an ear you gave to listen to a person whose heart is aching. Yung kahit gano ka, sabihin mo na, busy-busy ka, marami kang ginagawa, may tumawag sa'yo, may kumausap sa'yo, o nakasalubong ka, tapos biglang magpo-pour out ng kung ano pa mang mga bit-bitin. Parang, kailangan ko ba itong kausapin? Nagmamadali ako. O, pakinggan mo. Alam mo, yung gagawin mong ganon, kapatid, hindi niya malilimutan yon Maybe a note to encourage them. Yung piniem mo lang, konting, di ba? O kaya, out of nowhere, kinamusta mo lang. Di mo alam kung anong pinagdadaanan. Pero, this is an act of love to visit someone. Minsan, hindi yun dahil may sakit siya. 
Ang nakapagtataka nga sa atin eh. Pagka may sakit, dinalo mo. Pagka wala ng sakit, tapos pumunta ka, oh, bakit ka nandito? Parang nagtataka. Wala naman akong sakit, pastor ah. Ba't mo ako dinadalo? Parang dinadalo lang ng mga pastor pag may sakit, o mamamatay na. Hindi naman, mga kabatid. No? Pag may birthday din, nandiyan naman kami, wala naman may sakit, di ba? But seriously, really, church, we can express that love that would be remembered. For example, forgiving someone when they've done you wrong without them asking forgiveness. The time you sacrifice for them. Hindi ba? Brethren, in doing acts of genuine love, we are storing up for ourselves treasures in heaven where dust and moth and rust cannot destroy. And we will be building up the church of Christ and making it stronger. And when we allow God's agape love to fill us, napuspusin talaga tayo, punoin tayo, motivate us and be our core, then we will never have to worry about what will happen to us. Our families and even the church of Jesus Christ. When agape love rules in the hearts of the church, of CCBC, then CCBC advances. Aabante. It experiences victory and it transforms the lives of those around it and those in it. But when we start allowing things like impatience, competition, selfishness, rudeness, arrogance, greed, resentment, apathy, and lukewarmness to come in and find a home, then we begin the slow slide towards backsliding and spiritual death. For where agape love is, there is power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Where agape love does not rule, then there is the spirit of lukewarmness and apathy. When agape love is put on the shelf, the marriage suffers. The home suffers. The office, the business suffers. And most of all, the cause of Christ suffers. Church, we need to give love in our homes. Let me tell you something is really the most, the most practiced thing that we can give. It doesn't cost us anything and it is permanent. Halimbawa, yung mga laruan na sisira, yung mga da damit na luluma, yung mga bulaklak na mamatay, na lalanta, yung mga candy kinakain, yung bakasyon na tatapos. They may be remembered no more, but love will last and love will endure. And that's the love prevail because that is the nature of love. Let love emerge, mga kapatid. And on the occasions when there are problems in our church or in our home, it is love applied and love lived that will always restore those who are divided. Let's not forget to give our wife, our children, our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ and the Lord's Church the love that comes from God. Mga kapatid, pagpalain po tayo ng Panginoon and let this love emerge from us. God bless you all.
If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place that we all share. For even with our differences, our hearts are much the same. can be your family and hope can bring this town a face to face and though we may be far apart our hearts can be as one when love brings us together in one Wow, what a wonderful way to be reminded that on our 62nd anniversary, what marks us as a church, as a Christian family, is the love that comes from the Lord and that same love we exude so that we are able to love one another. And our prayer is that we'll be the kind of people as a church family that will really overflow with such kind of love. Before we go to our closing prayer and benediction, let me just remind us that today, as it has always been our part of our tradition, is that we have our everybody's birthday offering during our anniversary. 
and our recipient is our Missions Faith Promise Funds. That is um, the support for some of missionaries. Definitely some of them have been affected because of this pandemic. And we as a church would like to be faithful to the end, to the task of uh, supporting the work of those who are in the front line of missions. And the second thing is, of course, this afternoon, we would like to see all of you during our congregational meeting. It would be great for us to hear the highlights of our ministry uh, throughout the past months, even through this pandemic, and what the Lord is doing and will continue to do in the last half of the year. We hope that each of you will take the time to join us and we trust that you'll be there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but the Zoom will be open at 1.30. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Our dear God and loving Father, indeed we're so grateful that you first love us and that while we were yet sinners, you died on the cross for us. And our prayer, Lord, is that we will continue to experience your love that whatever situation we may be in, you'll be there for us. You are love, and everything that you do is because you love us. And now, Lord, just continue to pray that we as a church will continue to be faithful to the task and be faithful in serving you, loving you. Thank you, Lord, for those who have given their gifts, their times, and their talents for your ministry. Bless them, O oh Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His peace always. Amen and Amen. Let's serve the Lord together and we say, All for Jesus.